understanding the job of the tutors will help educators maximize on the effectiveness of Great Leap's reading intervention. Of foremost importance is making the student feel safe and comfortable. He did very good last week, man. Let me tell you. Give me another week like that, all right? When a student begins Great Leaps, they should start with the first page of phonics and phrases and begin the stories at a level where they feel comfortable. One of the biggest things we say is start them low. I don't care if they leap the first three lessons. You don't want to fail one-on-one. -on -one. Sure, they may say something is too easy, but that's okay. They'll feel good about that. Once the probe begins, the tutor must pay close attention to the student's reading. Let's do the first two lines together slowly, please. Ab, Bob. Okay, I like the beginning sounds. You're saying Bob, okay? You need to cut off that last sound because right now we just have, what two sounds do we have here? Bah, ah. Bah, ah. Nice job bringing it down. Can you blend those together for me? Bob. Bah. Ah. Bah. Good. It. Sit. 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 Pit. Much better, much better before you were saying pit. And it's tricky because we're not used to saying these sounds without that last sound usually, right? Where there are patterns that students are really struggling with or vowel sounds that students are really struggling with, it shows me that we need to go back and revisit. A tutor needs to observe 12 reading characteristics while students do Great Leaps probes. They include fluency, intonation, omissions, additions, substitutions, stop-and-go reading, reversals, word attack, punctuation, attitude, motivation, and confidence. Some reading characteristics count as errors, such as intonation, omissions, additions, substitutions, reversals, and punctuation. They must be noted during the reading of the probe. When students lack fluency, they read slow and flat with no sense, and frequently they hesitate. These are not marked as errors and will disappear with repeated practice. I'll work on that by modeling and having you try it after I say it, or let's read this together. Just all the practice involved with it. It makes you a lot better. It makes you want to like overachieve what you did the other day and the other day. You keep wanting to get better and better. If the student lacks intonation, they read without expression. This results in an error when punctuation is ignored. At the end of the session, modeling expressive reading helps the reader. Intonation is a problem. Is the student reading without expression. Sometimes this is called robot reading. Now, that's not an error, especially early, until Punctuation's ignored. With omissions, words left out are corrected and counted as errors. However, a line left out is counted as one tracking error. We stop it right then and get back. You skip that line. Then I can help. Do you need a tool? We can use a ruler. You can use a finger. Eventually, since we're going for speeds, the crutch is removed. The frogs call, they all call, they all call for rain. With the drips and the drops, they, they increase their loud refrain. How deep do you want the water? Stop. Unbelievable. Look, you left out a couple words, though. What's that? With? Yeah. Word or phrase additions are also counted as one error. Additions. There's some controversy over this one. There are those who say that if you add a word and it still makes sense to the passage, that's only your brain synthesizing stuff very quickly and doing correct generalizations. But I say that's dangerous because eventually you start adding words that change the sense. And if you start doing that, you're going to get in trouble. Bad habit. Call it an error. Let me get back to the to my basketball game. If we lost now, it all. If we lost it all now, I would be the one to they blame, and we couldn't have that now, could we? Okay, you made two mistakes. That's still a great leap. You mispronounced basketball. You added an S on it, and you also said we've. If we if we we'd lost this game, uh, okay. okay, but it's still a great leap for you. Substitutions are also counted as errors, even if the meaning does not change. 
However, word alterations caused by dialect are not errors as long as meaning remains the same. For instance, I talked about the dialect. Ax for ask is not a substitution. It's a different pronunciation of the same word. But if you go around and change uh, asks to ask, you change the word, error. If you change are not to ain't, it's an error. You change the words. Mama for mother, you change the word. It's an error. It is just a little place. It sits just off the road. If you like to fish and have some time, it is the place to go. It is just a little place. It sits right off the creek. The fish is good. There is lots of shad. You missed a couple of them right here instead of right on the creek. I think it was right in the creek, you said. And then, what was the other one? Right here. Instead of fishing, you said fish. If you just say fish, it changes the whole meaning of that sentence, okay? So, because if you say the fish is good, then you're saying they were acting good, right? But if you say the fishing is good, then that's a completely different meaning, right? Okay, good job. Changes caused as a result of speech impediments are not errors. If their mind is seeing the word correctly, it is correct. They're trying to say it correctly. Stop and go reading is not an error and can be remediated with practice and modeling. A simple intervention is having the students slow down in their reading and amazingly they will actually begin to speed up. Slow down, you'll speed up. Simple interventions. The, the little boy, all he wants to do, he's motivated, all he wants to do is win so bad <laughs> that he can't keep up with his place and he's going faster and his brain's going to let him go. So let's slow him down, calm him down, and he'll speed up. From her brain, brass the bricks, drain the lot of my friends from her brain. For the bricks, for, no, for the fries, his slow down own a brain. Bit more. My good friend says his fries. You know what you did with that one? What? Got better and better as you went. What strategy did you start using when you got in the middle? Um, slow it down and piece in and at the same time, it's like dun dun dun. Take a rhyme. Reversals with words or letters are errors. B's, D's, P's, and Q's look mighty similar. Wases and saw, dogs and God. Those little reversals. The best way to beat reversals that we've seen is practice. Girls flocked around him. He could do them wrong, and they'd come back running. And I just want you to take a look at this sentence here. Read that whole sentence to me. He could, was it that one? Yeah. Okay. He could do them wrong and they'd come running back. You just got these two yeah. backwards. Students word attack when they randomly guess without paying any attention to the word structure or how it is written. You may notice Great Leaps doesn't have pictures. I want them to use their skills to figure out the words. Often you, you can figure a child that doesn't have good word attack skills, who is used to guessing and has been reinforced for guessing, you may have the word mammoth, and there's a picture on the top, and the little guy will read it as elephant. <laughs> and you, you know he's not paying attention to the structure of that word at all. Ignored punctuation is an error. However, it is not an error when the student struggles one word at a time because the passage is too difficult. Every punctuation mark that is ignored is an error. And it needs to be pointed out. You ran that period. Oh, slow down for a stop sign. That's a question. It should sound like a question. I did not have the cash to pay it. I needed their help. It was, it was, it was my job to pay for it. I needed a loan. It cost a lot. Next time I will stop. Don't forget when uh, you have a period, you know, kind of, you know, slow. Slow down, you know, pause. Pause at the periods. Poor attitude often results in errors and poor performance. Attitude, oh man. There's not a whole lot of interventions you can do while reading with attitude. You're going to have to know the trick for that kid right off the bat. But if he's too cool to do this, I'm too cool to do it with you. <laughs> we'll try it again later. I'm here to teach you to read, and when you're ready to try, I'm more than ready to have a winner here. You know, so later, Gator. Due to a lack of motivation, many struggling readers have lived with the I can'ts so long that they really can't perform. Effective tutor coaching and modeling can help a non-motivated student see how they can succeed. Somehow they've lost so much 
They don't want to get linked into another losing ball game, and you're just another losing ball game. When a student lacks the final reading characteristic, confidence, they often look to the tutor for reassurance. Give it to them freely and coach them with praise. It's not a time filler. There's a real purpose here, and it's to make sure that kids are feeling good about their reading and becoming more comfortable and not making it be an obstacle, yet one more thing in the day that they have to struggle with.